Greetings, D&D players, enthusiasts, and observers alike, and welcome back to Chronicles of Korea. My name is Emma, and I will be your DM today and every day that this wonderful campaign exists. Let's go around the virtual table, as always, and introduce our lovely players. But we're going to go in reverse order today. Well, for them. So we're going to start with the lovely Jeremy. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeremy, and uh, I play the dad of the group. Damien. Uh, Damien's a blacksmith who is currently drinking his woes away after watching his wife die for a second time. Indeed. And on that sad note, we move to the other sad grieving boy of the party, Andrew. Yeah, it's I'm Andrew playing Thael Thu, the druid slash cleric reborn lizard folk of the star-related subclasses who still doesn't have a handle on spellcasting when it comes to multi-class. Um, but yeah, he's somewhat grieving, but he'll get over it. I suppose he will, but let us move on to Nathan. Hey, everybody. I'm Nathan, and uh, I play Rubo, local fuckboy extraordinaire, Asimar, pain in the ass. And we move on to the Asimar pain in the ass's buddy, the eldritch horror, Gia. Hi, everyone. It's me, Gia. I'm playing Chatwin Darcy, reborn sorcerer. Lovely to be here. Sorry I scared you last week. <laughs> Had some spooky times. Did you did? No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Get away! And last but not least, we move on to our wonderful Rosie. Hi, I'm Rosie. I'm playing Elon, a champion fighter from the city of Korea. I'm the ultimate pretty boy, and I need mirrors in my room, apparently. Apparently you do, but last time our lovely band of misfits wrapped things up at the tower and made their way back to the royals of the Feywild. On the way, Chatwin tried to hide in a corner and stay as inconspicuous as possible, ended up in an argument with Santhavec, uh, again, <laughs> as everyone else steered the ship and ran it into the beach. Rubo came out covered in vomit, as expected. Everyone forced him to get cleaned up, and Felthu opted for a burial at sea for his friend Captain Garner that didn't turn out the way everyone kind of wanted it to. By the time everyone made their way back to the kings and queens of the Feywild, it appeared that everyone was exhausted and ready to get everything over with. Although Chatwood was very excited to be given the opportunity to play with an alchemy set provided by the Winter King. So we pick back up with the party splitting off in its respective directions. And I guess um, we can pick up with Chatwin headed to the uh, the alchemy lab. <gasps> Little old me. Indeed. <laughs> uh, you are led very quickly. The Winter King actually flies you oh to, the, uh, to a tall... Great building. They seem to have more like skyscraper esque type things. Think like New York City vibes. Oh my in god! In the Winter Kingdom, fantasy New York. Basically, in the Feywild. I'm here. I've made it. I've peaked. <laughs> <laughs> but he stops you in front of one of the like. This building's got like four or five stories to it, easily. And he drops you down in front of it and leads you inside to on the first floor. There is you pass a multitude of what look like classrooms, rooms for practicing enchantments and various other types of magics and end up at the end of the hall where a room full of alchemy and lab tools sit. It's empty and he kind of gestures inside and is like well if you need anything please let me know but space is yours for the evening if this is fantastic this is so i'm sorry i <laughs> i always 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 wanted to study at a place like this when i was younger but then i kind of just like i became magical on my own and i didn't need it and i still wanted to you know i just I, this is this is i'm i feel like a child having a I feel like a childhood dream is coming true right now. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And you see him give a little chuckle. <laughs> uh, I'm going to rush into the alchemy lab, having a lot of mixed feelings, partially very excited, partially having very violent flashbacks. But I I'm going to just immediately, I 
<laughs> my big heavy satchel up on the nearest table, empty it out, get my tools out, set um set out all the little samples of things I've collected so far, and just kind of sprawl out and uh, get to work. In this big alchemy lab, I am absolutely going to try finish the anti-venom first. That's going to be the first thing I'm doing. Sounds good. I would also like to just investigate the nature of the black stardust I collected. See if there's any sort of lingering magical effects on it so that I can maybe derive using alchemist tools. You know, see if... Mm. Just kind of investigate the nature of it, essentially. See what I can glean from it. But the first thing I will do is make that anti-venom. Okay. Uh, so that would be for you. I would say that is... I'm pretty sure alchemy checks are usually are those arcana or wouldn't that just be like intelligence plus my proficiency modify I mean proficiency bonus? Yes, because you're using the alchemy kit. Uh, is that what we did last time? I believe it is. Or we okay. at least if we didn't, we should have, because the alchemy kit is like um any sort of tool check, yeah. basically. I mean, yeah, my arcana is plus seven anyways, and my intelligence and proficiency is proficiency is plus seven. Um so, yeah, I don't get any sort of advantage or bonus or anything working in this big fancy lab by chance. Unfortunately not. They are simply the tools of the trade. They don't give you uh, any sort of advantage. Worth a shot. Ooh, that is 17 on the die, plus 7. That's 24 for the anti-venom. Mm. Yeah, you're used to, like, working with very little when it comes to that travel alchemy kit. But now that you have a full lab full of all the tools you recognize and need, you're able to spread out a little more, do more quickly. And it takes you maybe 45 minutes to concoct this uh, anti-venom. Oh, hell yes. Okay, anti-venom has been made. Is it just, because I know I only collected a little bit of the venom, so I've only made like one little vial. Okay, that's basically all I need. I've been keeping meticulous notes on the steps I took on how to make it because I told them I'd do that um, mm-hmm. so they can make it themselves. So I will I will go ahead and set aside that anti-venom and all the notes it took to make it. And now that that's finished, um, just kind of investigate this black stardust to the best of my ability. See if there's anything to it. Alrighty. Go ahead and make me either a... I'm going to call that either an arcana check or a check with your alchemist. Well, you said it's the same thing. Yeah. But, um, so Probably I- just do it with my alchemist tools? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, that's going to be a dirty 20. Alrighty. And with a dirty 20, what exactly are you trying to test for? I want to see if there's any lingering magical effects. Um, mostly, I want to see if it's... <sighs> If there's anything about it that's not good in nature, maybe a bit more sinister, I suppose. Because compared to the other starters that we saw, it does seem different. See if I can't tell, you know, why it's different from the other stardust we saw um, come from Thalthu, um, stuff like that. Okay. With that, I would say with a dirty 20, you would be able to discern that it's not necessarily a... Like, there is some lingering magic on it, but it's not necessarily, like, usable magic as much as it's whatever matter was there previously has been degraded by magical means. Mm -hmm. And as far as what you can tell when you start doing various tests, you realize that whatever disease caused them to be undead has literally corroded what little body was dissolved to the point that um, even like the cells that made it up were corrupted by the venom. Hence why the magic worked so strangely on it. Because even then, the cells were trying to resist and still live. So it was some very powerful magic making these undead, essentially. Essentially. If it's corrupting victims, even on the cellular level, that's that's beyond what you've ever seen before in cases of what you've worked on. Damn. I finish up my experiments with the black stardust, m- meticulously know all my findings, same as I did with the anti-venom. I kind of stop and look around. I realize I'm alone, and I'm very eager to share my research. Hmm. I- <laughs> a voice pipes up. I never thought I would see you in a lab again. 
Yeah, me neither. But uh, life is kind of weird that way, isn't it? I guess it is. Find anything interesting? Uh, maybe something that tells us a bit more about what we're dealing with here, but uh, not not too much. Hmm. Hmm. But all of this gets us access to the library, so. Indeed it does. If you behave yourself, I will try to find books that you want me to find. I feel like if I don't behave, you'll still do it. I have I have research of my own that I want to do. I don't give a fuck about your research. Well, from what I understand, you want me out of your head, right? And you want the same, yes, yes, I know. Yes, so my research is also your research. Uh, look, just don't act like a bitch and get us kicked out of the library, okay? I know that's hard for you to do, but try your best. <laughs> Well, as long as no one's rude, then we will not have a problem. <sighs> fuck you so much. Just fuck you. <laughs> fuck you too, dear. Ah, uh, God, fuck. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised your mother didn't rep you, reprimand you more for that mouth, given the family you came from. My mother is a very lovely woman. Thank you very much. Okay, you don't... No, 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 no. You don't get to talk about my mother. That's... No, no, no. She's a very lovely woman. Most of the time. <laughs> Aren't they all? Mm, mothers. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think that's all I had to do. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I didn't... I don't think... I don't have anything in my inventory in terms of, like, samples of other substances that I wanted to investigate. It was mostly just the anti. I'm trying to check my notes and make sure there's not anything else. Um, I'm pretty sure there's nothing else, though. Yeah. Okay. So I will go ahead and finish up. I clean the lab very thoroughly as soon as I'm finished. Um, put everything back where it was. Make sure it's all nice because I de deeply appreciate them letting me use it. So I want to make sure I leave it nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tuck away the anti venom in the notes and exit the lab. Is there anyone, like, waiting for me outside the lab? The little what looks to be the, I will call him the butler pixie, is waiting for you. Oh, excellent. Uh, hi, good to meet you, by the way, Chatwin Darcy. Oh, hello. Nice to meet you as well, Chatwin. Right. Um, I got the anti-venom finished, and I prepared the notes on how I, um, uh, created it, so you can all replicate it on your own, if you like. Um, so it's, that's ready to go. That would be perfect. Would you like me to take you back to the king and his companions now? Ah, uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Of course. Or were you planning to see them in the morning? I know your friends all went off to a hotel. Uh, uh, I'm a bit of a night owl. I don't have to... I can run on less sleep than they can, so I'm okay. Fair enough. Right this way. And he will lead you back in the direction of the, the big tree. I've never been more excited about the fact that Reborn only have to sleep for four hours because I can spend those other four hours reading books. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's amazing. Let's fucking go to this library and have a party, y'all. Alrighty. And for a brief minute, as you're traveling back, we will cut over to um, everyone else heading to the hotel. Aliana leads you over to this very cozy looking uh, two-story, what they call a hotel that looks more like the cozy bed and breakfast that you stayed in at the very first town that you guys were in, in Ivanborough. She leads you in and a uh, spring aladrin with what appears to be vines braided into like a very military style braid uh, at the back of his head is kind of leaning around behind the desk, whistling to himself. And he turns and just goes, Oh, hello. Uh, Aliana, these must be your friends. And she goes, That they are. There's a couple more coming at some other point in time. I'm not entirely sure. But we've got these three here now for their separate rooms. And he kind of nods, turns to the three of you and just goes, I'm sure I've been introduced. Pleasure to meet you all. And he plucks three keys from off the back that have kind of like these wooden carved keychains on them. Hands out one to you, Elon, and says, you will be on the second floor. Wow, where did that accent go? Um, you will be on the second floor. Thank you. Turns to Rubo. You will be on the first floor. Holds out a key. And looks at Thelthu. You will also be on the second floor. 
Oh, I won't be needing a room. Uh, it was the other two that had planned to stay here. Ah, you're the one sleeping under the stars. Interesting. That is my hope, yes. <laughs> well, the stars are beautiful out here, so enjoy. And he'll put the key back and just be like, let me know if you need anything else. Uh, I'll be here all evening. I'm going to turn to Aliana. Do you mind if we have that talk now? Oh, um, not at all. All right. He's going to go up to his room. And she'll fly off and follow you. And Ruba and Thalthu, you are left in the lobby of the of the inn. I feel like Ruba and Thalthu are kind of like the awkward part of the friend group that, like, they get left alone. They're like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Like, not that, like, Rubo or Thealtha don't like each other, but we just, like, have had more limited interaction, so it's kind of like, mm. what do we do now? <laughs> well, I thought I would be being guided to where the trees are, but I suppose that can wait. Uh, do, you, do you want a drink? I'm all right. Okay. But uh, I don't mind waiting with you until Eliana comes back. Yeah. I'll turn to the innkeeper guy. Is this also like a tavern or is it just an inn? Can I tell? I mean, it's more just an inn, judging by the lobby. I mean, they've got like a couple tables off to the side, but it's very clear that like any food and refreshment that anyone has is usually brought with them. So they don't really serve it. Gotcha. Uh, I'll go. Um, Where can we maybe get some food and drink around here? Oh. There's a lovely little restaurant up the street that our eldest members of the Spring Village, I suppose that's what we'd call it. Yes, the Spring Village. They they run the restaurant. The husband is a fantastic cook and the wife bakes. If you've never had good berry biscuits, you'll want to. But doesn't that defeat the purpose of the good berries if you put them in something else? I, I put my arm through Thealthu's space arm, and I say, uh, it's a date then, Thealthu. I was hoping for the hotter one to come with me, but I guess it's just me and you. I'm sorry that I don't think I run that warm. Well, I'll deal with it. Uh, and I just start pulling Thealthu along, arm in arm. Yeah, we'll head over there. And you hear as you're kind of like pulling him out, Ravimir kind of like turns and goes, it's actually a very minimalistic dessert if you, and then poof, door, door slams as he's talking about <laughs> And you guys head down the street, very, very easily find this place. It's not really as much an enclosed building as it is like, think like a gazebo almost, but much okay. larger so that it can fit a myriad of like tables and chairs and whatnot um, for people to sit at. And in the center, kind of like fenced off by like wood, there's the kitchen is boxed off, but you can still see into it where two older looking Aladrin are cooking a variety of dishes like meats, cheeses. You see bread baking in an oven. Does it look like we just seat ourselves or something? Yeah, you see another couple like walk in before you and just take the, the closest available table. Cool. I uh, gentlemanly pull out the Althus chair. <laughs> oh, um, thank you. Push him in. I'll just take this deep. I have to try pretty hard. And the Althus is a pretty big guy. To... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I go, uh, okay, um, let's get some food and we'll try those biscuits. Right? Would you be... I? I don't actually. I don't really know what you eat, besides those little berries. Um, whatever's around. I'm not too picky. The berries are just convenient. Oh. Uh, and I'll kind of look around for a waiter. And as you say that, you see what looks to be kind of like a a teenage, what would appear essentially as like a teenage girl in a Ladrineers, since they're much, <laughs> they live much longer. Uh, would come up to the table and just be like, hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Um, can I get you? And she would pass you kind of menus written on like parchment and would sort of like unroll them in front of you. As I take a look at the menu, I'll say, would, would it be rude to maybe ask for something off menu? Well, um, my parents aren't exactly opposed to experimenting. What can we do for you? Well, I, I I love this dish, and it's something that was maybe recently invented that 
uh, you'll take uh, like a charcuterie board. Have you heard of these? Of course we have. We're not heathens. Um, and you, you pack them together with um, nice combinations of different meats and cheeses and maybe a, a sweet of some kind um, and uh, into kind of a smaller dish. Uh, we, we call it a snackum. Uh, I, I, I would love to maybe, you know, see a, a fey interpretation of, of this snackum. Back, back where I'm from, that's what we call it. Interesting. You said it's like meat and cheese combos off a shokuru board and then a sweet to go with it. But, you know, less extravagant like a, uh, a, than the big board, just a kind of more confined, maybe, maybe uh, like a, a cracker or a uh, something to go along with, with the meat and cheese that pairs nicely. Hmm. Our nan makes a pretty mean hard tack that can go on top if sliced thinly enough. Uh, if you just run it by them. If, if not, I mean, I can order, but. It, it is my favorite thing to eat. We'll see what we can do. Thank you. And she'll look at Valthu. And for you? Oh, I'll just, um, perhaps I heard the good berry biscuits were uh, good. Best ones anyone around here has ever had. So. Uh, then, yes, I'll order that then. All right. How many do you want? Uh, j- j- just one should be fine. All right. And she'll take a note of it. I'll be right back. And she walked off to go get your orders, please. Fialthu, have you ever been in love? Not that I can remember, at the very least. And I'm almost certain you're not talking about me and you right now. Oh, um, no, no, uh, uh, it was I, was I leading that, uh, you're very, you're very nice, Fialthu, I'm, um. No, no, um, I just thought it would just to, to clear up to make sure we're on the same page, so to speak. No, I mean, you're, you're, you're. You're very, very attractive, I'm sure, to s- some people. Uh, but, uh, no, yeah, no, not, not us. No, I, I, I would, I, there are other things that I, um, need to figure out first. Um, but, uh, you, you were asking, uh, no, I, I don't believe I have, uh, nor do I, I, I suppose I can really comment on subject too much. Um, well, that's not all it's chalked up to be. I guess sometimes <sighs> being kind of a hopeless romantic, I guess some would call me and get your feelings hurt more than, than others. I I feel like I, I don't know, I don't know who to talk to about this, so I figured I'll just try with you and see how this happens. But I just, you, you think Elon's pretty cool, right? I suppose, but I, I thought you thought they were hot. So I, I suppose oh, they're hot. The opposite for me. I don't know. Room temperature, perhaps, as I'd consider them. Oh, um, I guess I didn't really pick up on this before when you mentioned that. Uh, when I say someone's hot, I guess it refers to their their attractiveness. You how um, their their physical outward looks. It's a, it's like a slang. Right. I have been starting to get that picture by how much I've been bringing it up and the context didn't seem fully there, but that makes sense. Um, well, I suppose in a, in a sense, perhaps I can't say I've looked at them or really anyone in that regards, but, uh, it is subjective. Is it not? Uh, it's true. I just, I don't know. I, 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 I once, you know, really loved someone. It kind of hurt me. I, I guess I'm scared if I try to be interested in Elon, something like that will happen again. Well, from the way I understand things, the, what happens, it all happens for a reason. In some sense, faded by the stars, perhaps. It was faded that we would get hurt once to learn something, perhaps. Perhaps now is your right time. If they feel the same way, I suppose. I don't. I guess I don't know. If, uh, life feels like it's happening very fast lately. Well, it, it literally is for us. Um, every hour is a day or something along those lines. Not, not yeah. that I can really say the passage of time has really had too much of a concern for me right now. And with that, the waitress swings back <laughs> by and. <laughs> Places down a like on a small wooden plate, um, a single good berry biscuit, which is like a 
a small shortbread cookie topped with like a couple good berries and some like jam underneath that looks like it would be made from a good berry. It's it's not as big and extravagant as you thought, but it's still very nicely decorated. Mm. And Rubo, on the other hand, you get a large like platter placed in front of you. Oh. With a what looks to be like a it's almost like they took the charcuterie thing like a bit literally. And there are the pieces of like baked like hard tack or whatever. And they're all kind of splayed out so you can see what's in the sandwich, but you can very easily like pull it together and just pull it off the platter to eat with like the hard tack, meat, cheese, another piece of hard tack that it's all sort of like layered and presented all like circling around the platter. There's different alternating flavors of like meats and cheeses circling a good another good berry biscuit. Wow. Is this what you were open for? This is like snack of XL. <laughs> this is for the ones that have a, a big hunger along with wanting a snack of, I guess. Yeah, it's great. Um, thank you. You're very welcome. Well, just let me know how you enjoy it, and I'll let my parents know. They may keep that recipe. And with that, she kind of wanders off to let you enjoy your food. I, I, I take the first bite and I just look over at the altar with my eyes like lighting up. And I'm like, oh, I wish Chadwin was here to see this. Or perhaps we could bring some back with us. Absolutely. I don't know how well that would keep. <sighs> well, I guess my rambling about people is, we can we just keep it between us for now, I suppose? Oh, of course. I don't plan on telling. No, I keep what everyone says to me. You think Damien's going to be okay? I'm sure he will. It is. I can only imagine a tough thing to see that. And it is. Uh, he visibly gets a little agitated when he's about to say this next line. So something was off, um, but on my part of of that, as I, you saw, obviously, I I hope he finds his peace. I do too. I can't help but be worried about him at least a little bit, though. Well, I suppose he's in the hands of that bay, so it should all work out. Is that even a good thing? I don't. I don't know anything about these people. Neither do I. I I don't know. But he seemed nice enough, I suppose. Yeah. I'm going to eat this, and then I think, I guess I need to get to bed, sleep a week. This is so strange. I'm not sure how that is all going to play out, but I I do hope to find the garden or forest at some point. I'll do it during the night. Maybe That may be a better time, to be honest. Well, thanks for the conversation and company. Of, Of course. Um, yeah, I am always an ear. And with that, we will cut away from our two bros enjoying their various foods and Hell yeah. talking. And we will cut back to Elon and Aliana. Elon's going to go up to the room and kind of just give it a glance over, see how well it is, I suppose. It is a rather nice room. It's very simple. A bed, dresser, nightstand. Vanity. Not necessarily a vanity as much as like a a floor length mirror. Perfect. Okay. He's just going to turn to Aliana and and say, I won't keep you long because I know you need to take uh, Thelthu to the garden or wherever they were saying cultivate. Um, Yeah. I just have a really simple question. All right. And a favor, actually. How much did the goddess tell you about me? Honestly, not too much. She just said that some, I can't remember the exact words, but she said something along the lines of we would find five lost souls that would be, that together could solve our problem. But nothing specific about those five? No. I'm starting to realize with this group what happened on the boat, both with Rubo and Chatwin. And then maybe even, maybe something with Damien at that fight. And obviously fell through alone. But we all have our secrets. Everyone does. If you find out mine, you're different because you live here. I would ask that you not share it with the others until I'm ready. It's not my secret to share. It's safe with me. Okay. That's that's all I, I just was curious how much she told you about me. That's all. Um... Would you also, and he digs through his little bag and pulls out that letter, 
Would you mind delivering this for me? Yeah. I can go out and get someone to take it to the nearest post that's not going to ask any questions. That'd be great. Thank you. Of course. I won't keep you any longer. I'm I'm going to relax. And she'll, she'll hoist the letter into her arms. And this is important, yeah? I would like to think it's important. I better get it off. Thank you, Ollie. I appreciate it. I really do. Not a problem. We'll see her out. And she'll let her out and go to deliver the letter and then find Telthu. After she leaves, I close the door. Is there a lock on the door? Yes, there's a lock on the door. I lock it. And then I'm going to proceed to go over to the mirror, take off my bags, my armor, relax, and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do my makeup, take it off. Yeah. So, and I'm going to relax. And seeing as you've slept on the ground for days and days of time, this is the softest bed you've slept on in weeks. <laughs> nice. I'd probably pass out a little. Yeah, you would probably doze off a bit. That's all I got. Alrighty. Then we jump over to the summer court and a certain dad of the group arriving at his third bar. I'm going to have you make me a constitution save, my friend. He's gotten oh. you drinking and he's gotten you drinking fast. Uh, Damien's entirely planning on getting completely thrashed. But for a constitution save, that's a really high roll. Not what I wanted. <laughs> Damien's used to drinking, I guess. You should, if you saw my prequel, you'd know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right. With an 18, you're starting to feel a little bit of a buzz. But for having been to three bars and having him essentially looking at the bartender and going, give me the strongest thing you've got. This is definitely not as little as you were expecting to feel. I'm going to look at him and be like, lad, you got to have something stronger than all this, right? Well, you really know how to hold your liquor then. Guess I got to get you two this time. Uh, all right. Well, I guess I gotta get you too then. But don't worry. This way they've got uh, they've got a really good spicy room that'll I think will get you where you wanna be. God, I hope so. He takes you to a tavern called the Dragon's Breath. Pulls you in, it's it's quite crowded, and you see plenty of people sitting around dancing, uh, having a good time. You see a couple people taking shots of some sort of liquor that's lit on fire. Which seems really exciting and not at all something that that would have been done back at all. Can I have one of those? Oh, fire breather? Hell yeah, you can have one of those. All right, let's get started then. All righty. And he walks up to the bar and slams his hand down twice on the on the bar and is like, Hey, Paul, two of the fire breathers and give me three spice and dice as well. <laughs> <laughs> and... A centaur uh, looks over the bar and is like, you got it, sir. And sounding a little tipsy himself, kind of trots over to the other side of the bar where all the mixing supplies are and brings back a few glasses. After a couple minutes of sitting there watching him like mix these crazy drinks, he brings over two shots of what appears to be like a clear liquor that is burning at the top almost like a candle, and he places down three more small glasses of what appears to be a darker liquor. Uh, Damon's gonna slam back one of those fire breathers. Alright, you slam it back and it burns as you chug it down, both from the alcohol and the fire, and the satyr kind of looks at you and goes, I didn't tell you how- to oh, okay. You burn your tongue, that ain't on me. And he throw, uh, he very carefully kind of like almost swallows the flame first and then takes the shot. Okay. And I was like, ah, those are always good. But this is the real good stuff. And he pushes two of the glasses of the what he called the spice and dice. I was like, take a sip of that. Gonna sip it. All right. You take a sip, and um, it's got that familiar taste of alcohol, but it also feels like... You remember one of your friends, his wife had traveled all around the world for about a month before coming back. And when she came back, 
she had all these new recipes that she brought back and was into some of these like what she called very like hot dishes from the howling dunes and when you when she'd said hot before you were expecting like that to mean like they were trendy they were like new things that no one had ever really tried before but what that really meant was there's a lot of spice in it these drinks have a lot more spice in it so that familiar like there is no taste my tongue has been numbed because everything is hot and he's just like whoa what was her name again my friend's wife her name would have been mira he's like whoa I've got to take one of these home to Mira. She would lose it. There's nothing like her, like, seared seasoned steak thing she made. Well, I take it that was spicy, too? Uh, not as spicy, but, yeah, pretty much the burns your taste buds away. Well, when you go to the plane of fire to get your spices, they're hotter than most. Duly noted. All right. Starts drinking. And... He'll keep ordering you drinks as you request them, essentially. Uh, make me another con save, this time at disadvantage. All right. At least I know I'm going to get lower than that roll. Uh, that's still a lot higher than I want. That's 13 plus 3 is a 16. I rolled a 19 and a 13. Damien's just not getting drunk fast enough. Nope. And you're starting to feel it a bit now with as many drinks as you've had. But it's still not numbing out that, like the thoughts that are in the back of your head reminding you of what happened today. Although the burning in your mouth is doing a pretty good job of distracting you temporarily, but it always comes back. Yep. And he's just like, oh, still not enough. Another. Alrighty. You're the boss. Another bar, another drink. I don't care. I'll take that as another drink then. (laughs) And he waves over another set of the fire breather shot. And another spice and dice. All right. As Damien gets drunk, he's just going to start like talking. Like he's going to get into his drunken state where he starts talking about his wife and his kids. And he'll just listen, let you ramble on as much as you want to. And he'll share in the like cute little stories and kind of nod along with you as you talk about missing her. He'll also talk about a lot of the good things that him and his kids and wife did. Mm -hmm. And he'll kind of look at you impressed and be like, you really had a nice little family. I did. I had a nice family. Mm. Still do. Somewhat. Boy never comes home and the daughter's always traveling with her uh, wife all over the place. You miss him? Uh, yeah, I do. But it, it's nice traveling with Chatwin and Dale too and Rubo. Don't really know much about Elon. It's not too bad. It's nice to have another strong person in the party to, to kind of hold your back. And some of the craziest things that Chatwin does, oh, it's amazing. And Thelthu, the way the gods just respond to him, I just, I've never even imagined anything like what I've seen in this short time I've been with them. Well, when you get out there and experience things that ain't what you're used to, the world looks like a lot more of a fascinating and interesting place. Oh, amen to that. And you said the kids never come home. Well, now you're traveling. You could just go to them. Uh, I might do that later. I want to help the people I've been traveling with right now first. My kids are going to be there for a while. I mean, the lad's in the army, but they're not in any kind of conflict or anything. Mostly just, you know, trains and scrubs the stalls and stuff you know and the lass she's she's in good hands she knows a lot of people sounds like she's picked up your penchant for making friends uh i suppose so either that or her wife's really good at making friends regardless that too you about ready to head back i don't know if your friend was planning on yeah i'm good all right and he'll kind of hold out an arm as if to say lean on me i'll get you home (laughs) He's going to try and walk. All right. Make me a dexterity check. This is bad. <laughs> yeah, about that. That's a plus zero on the die. That's a three for the first roll. And a nat 20 for the second roll. <laughs> well. Well, then. <laughs> 
You take one step and you're like, oh, I can actually walk. You take the second and let go of the bench you were sitting on. <laughs> right onto the floor. And a chorus of laughs kind of follow. <laughs> He's just like, fuck. All right, I'll take the hand. <laughs> Leads on him. And he'll help you up. And it is very uncomfortable because he's about half your height. But um, he manages to... He's surprisingly strong for his stature as he drags you out of the bar and in the direction of everybody else. And we will cut very briefly back to um, Felthu and Rubo finishing up their meal as you watch and a little pixie body flies over to your table. and. Aliana kind of looks at you two and is like, there you are. I wasn't sure where you'd gone. Oh, did the uh, innkeeper not say? No, he said that you walked out in the middle of his conversation. I suppose we, we did, but uh, well, here we are. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not sure if Chatwin plans on um, going back to see the royals again tonight. I think I think Summer's a bit busy with your friend, but in the meantime, I can show you where the garden is. And where you'd probably be most comfortable sleeping for the night. Oh, that would be wonderful. Uh, Rubo, if you want to come along, you're more than welcome to. No, it's it's fine. I think I'm going to try to get some rest. Well, it was a long, many days. Um, but yes, I'll follow whenever you're ready. Of course. And she'll kind of look at Rubo real quick. You know your way back from here, yeah? Yeah, I'll okay, be all right. Good. And she'll lead the way for Thelthu. Leaving Rubo to finish his Snackums XO. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, XL. Whatever it was that you called them. Snackums XL. Something like that. Yeah. But uh felt through she would lead you to past the the hotel again and sort of out into the brush. It's more like wildflowers and bushes out here, nothing crazy. It's not really a full forest yet, but she goes ahead and leads you to this small bridge that sort of arches up over a small river and it leads you to what looks to be like a very cultivated dense forest with various plants from all over the material plane like you recognize some similar plants to what's in the grove that you grew up in uh you notice some plants from around some vines like similar to what you saw when you were in the sparkling grove all that sort of stuff as she kind of is like as long as you don't disturb anything that looks like it's the only one of its kind, I'd say you're good to plant the tree anywhere. There's some, there's definitely some undergrowth that's going to block the way a bit, but... Right, well, I don't mind getting my hands dirty, and well, I'll have to find a seat as well. It shouldn't be too long, and I think I can figure the way back. Thank you. You're welcome. What do you mean you need to find a seat? You didn't bring one. Um, no, I, I can't say I, I did. Um, it was... I assumed that there would be some sort of acorns or something from these trees. Well, we have been cultivating them for a little bit now, but yeah, you're welcome to do some looking around. I don't know what exactly will be available, though. That, that's all right. The only guidance I was given was to plant roots, and here at least seems a good place as any, from what I was told. Fair enough. Well, um, you know your way back from here? I should be able to figure it out over the bridge. Perfect. Awesome. Then I'll, um, I also don't want to intrude, so I'll leave you to it. Thank you again. Of course. And she will leave you to your search. Yep, and search he will. What would you like me to roll? Investigation or nature, whichever you would prefer. Uh, gonna go with nature. That is a 19, 13 plus 6. Yeah, with the 19, you would be able to very easily, like, you know about how far uh, most trees will drop their seeds so you manage to look at the size of the tree and calculate like how far all of them would be and start uh, picking around in the grass. And you come up upon an oak tree very quickly that has quite a few acorns sitting in the vicinity that are surprisingly untouched by... You've seen a couple squirrels go in and out, but it looks like there are enough acorns that they haven't taken them all yet. Right, perfect. Then he'll take one and then try to find somewhere nearby or... Somewhere not too far away from the place that he knows how to get back from to plant this little seed. Gotcha. Yeah. You would be able to sort of go back towards the bridge and there's a little, not necessarily like an outcropping, but there's like a little hill that you climb up a bit and it looks like 
uh, there's a little bit of plant life growing on it, but nothing's really been planted on the hill yet. Yeah, he'll dig a hole, probably knowing much more about nature and trees than I do. So he'll dig an appropriately sized hole to plant this little acorn, um, all the while probably saying a, some sort of prayer, ritualistic thing in druidic, both blessing the seed so that it may grow strong and that it may provide rest for those who may need it. Although in this place, it, it probably won't be providing much rest as this is cultivated area. But nonetheless, that is what he says as he plants this little seed. All right. And uh, you plant the little seed, uh, say your prayer over it. And as you finish sort of patting down the dirt, you look up and though the sun is still kind of setting within like the pinkish orange light that is meeting your gaze you see a single star sort of blink almost in the distance takes a second noticing it just kind of very reverently like bows his head kind of stays that like bowed for a, probably a 30 seconds or so and then goes back to the outside of the inn and chat when aliana would actually meet you at the at the tree and kind of be like so how was it uh, it's it went very well, actually. I uh, I learned a lot. I was able to uh, create an anti venom, so hopefully that will help them in the future if they are still having a problem with the um the vipers. Understood. Yeah, it looks like everyone else is getting settled into bed, so I don't know that they're all going to be back now that you've got it done. Oh, um, I mean. It was uh, discussed that I, I would only take an hour or two to create the anti-venom, and then afterwards I would have access to the library. So I would I would like to check before just heading straight to bed. Um, oh, yeah, sure. Not that I want to bother them, but also I really want to go into their library. So if I have the chance to do that. <laughs> if, if you want, I can go get everybody real quick. Everybody. Uh, oh, don't, don't you want them all to be here? You all get rewards for this. I don't think they're uh, going to want to pass it out one at a time. Oh, uh, no, that's 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 a good point. If they're not um, headed off to the beds themselves, um, I can I can I can go with you real quick. We'll run around and see who wants to come with. OK, and <laughs> but yeah, she'll I'll fly you back. Run with. Aliana around the Feywild for a bit. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll head back to the inn first and probably fail through if he's sleeping outside just very quickly. Uh, Thelthu, um, I'm going to uh, go turn in uh, the anti-venom here and see if I can't get access to the library. Do you, do you want to come with and maybe get your reward from them as well? Oh, uh, sure. That sounds right. good. It's, I'm gonna let's go get let's go see if Rubo's awake still and um Elon. Uh, uh, do you know what rooms they're in? Um, I was told I believe Rubo was somewhere on the first floor, Elon the second. Okay, we'll yeah we'll Rubo's probably um asleep already, but yeah we can go knock on Rubo's door real quick. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, we'll go upstairs or not upstairs. He said ground floor, so we'll go. Um, I'll follow Thalthu's direction and just. Rubo, Rubo, hey Rubo. Yeah. Uh, did you want to go and see if we are collecting rewards from the fake courts? I was going to try to get access to the library. I want to know if you wanted to come with. Yeah, I, I'll come. Okay, great. Um, I'll go get uh, Elon. See if he wants to join us. Uh, before, real quick, did I get some of the snack items XL to go? <laughs> yeah, she would have been able to um pack some of them up. They're wrapped in like what looks like a, like large palm leaves almost. Ooh. Even better. Uh Chatwin, I, I actually have like hobbling out of my room trying to pull a boot on as she's running down the hallway and I'm what? like, I, I got some really cool What'd you get? Look, 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 look. And What'd I'll pull get? it out. <gasps> Snackums XL. Snackums XL. <laughs> it's like a snackum but but big. So you basically invented phase two of the snackums. Well, I mean, it wasn't 100% me. I guess it was the, this nice little restaurant we went to. Uh, me and me and Fialfu. Yeah, we can give them collaboration credits. I think I think they're going to serve them from here on out, too. So Excellent. We're leaving our mark everywhere we go in the form of snackums. Uh, did, did you want to have one? Sure. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll try it. I'll, I'll give Chatwin one and 
it's truly been raising an eyebrow a little while since Chatwin has actually eaten food. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> she doesn't have to do it, so she just doesn't. So she's a little awkward about it, but takes it and kind of, mm, mm, yeah, like kind of awkwardly holding it up, like mm, delicious, and I'll take a bite. <laughs> this isn't weird. This isn't weird at all. Um, <laughs> oh no, no, it's 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 great. It works out. It works out well. That's exactly what I was thinking. I I mean, just being able to take it to the next level is amazing yeah here you can finish mine i'm not super hungry oh uh okay yeah um i'm gonna go get elon up real quick yeah go for it okay he's upstairs yeah i believe he's on the second floor okay okay great i'll run upstairs um and get up to elon's door and just elon it's chatwin elon elon's gonna rise of a start like <laughs> oh fuck chatwin what is it we're going to go um, speak with the fake court one more time. I got the anti ventum finished, so we were going to all go collect rewards um, all at once to just make it easier. Oh, fuck. Are you all right, Elon? I'm, I'm exhausted. Um, I'll give me like, give me 15 minutes to get dressed again, okay? okay. I'll, I'll be down. All right. Elon is going to have to put his makeup <laughs> back on. Big chat one. <laughs> make himself look all pretty again. <laughs> I'll go downstairs and wait for Elon. <laughs> uh, has anyone seen Damien? I know he was going over in summer court for a while. No, can't say I have. Okay. I haven't seen him. I kind of hope he's all right, though. Yeah. And as if on cue, <laughs> oh, no. a, a small hooved foot kicks the door open and lugs a barely functional Damien in through the door. He's like, oh. I figured y'all would have gone to bed already. Uh, no. Damien can collect in the morning, right? It seems like he's, um... Damien, are you feeling okay? <laughs> uh, um, I'm, I'm alright. What's the plan, little... Who are you? Is that the out there? Okay. Oh, no, that's, that's chat one. I chat one. Um, we can... Do we want to put Damien to bed for now? I feel like he's not going to be able. No, no, no! Bring him along. Are 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 you real Chatwin or not real Chatwin? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps he should be put to bed. I, I believe we could, maybe we could get whatever his reward was and give it to him in the morning. No, I'm fine. I'm good. Yeah. He's fine, guys. Okay, let him walk on his own. Damien, I'm going to stand across the room. Damien, I want you to walk in a straight line towards me. And if you can do that, then you'll come with us. If not, I'm putting you to bed. He's going to look to the le- uh, look at the um, monarch, look at the floor and the distance between him and Chatwin, and be like, you want me to walk that far? Mm-hmm. Shakes his head. All right, all right, yeah, I'll do it. Straight line. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, he's going to try and walk in as, le- as minimally crooked of a line as possible. <laughs> All right, sir. Roll me a deck save with disadvantage. What's a sixteen? Don't be horrible. That's a fourteen. So oh. it's fourteen even. That's not bad. He wobbles a bit, but it looks like he's not as he's at least not as drunk as he sounds. Okay. So okay, that's acceptable. Do you want to come with Damien? I do. Uh, I'm good. I've had lots of bar fights in my youth. I mean, we're just waiting for Elon. He's putting all of his things on. He's getting dressed. Um, but then we can head over. Robot, go get your boyfriend. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I just turn and start walking. <laughs> breathe, Rubo, breathe. Stop holding your breath. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> and Rubo, you walk upstairs. Can can I try to walk into Alon's room before? <laughs> Catch um, him, yeah. he did lock the you, door. You try the door; it is locked. Alon, you you see the handle move. <laughs> Who's there? Uh, in, in Rubo's head. <laughs> Not your boyfriend. <laughs> It's it's me. 
Give me just a moment. I'm almost done. And like probably two minutes later, because he's at this point fast at it. He opens the door. His hair is down and he's not wearing his armor. So he's normal. God, he looks great. (laughs) (laughs) You just know he looks great. God, hair down. He's got that got that dress down, like yeah. comfy, cozy vibe. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm sorry it took a while. Oh. Uh, no, it it <laughs> took just long enough. <laughs> Come on, Rubo. <laughs> Alright, let's go. <laughs> and with that, you join the rest of the group downstairs and the summer monarch. And Aliana leads you all back to the throne room area where the winter Aladrin kind of stands in front of all the thrones. Oh, perfect. Sorry, I I know it's I know it's a bit late, but I did want to deliver this um as quickly as possible. I'm going to hand him the um anti venom I have made and the notes that I have written down, which I have made a copy for myself, the notes, by the way. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> But hand him the instructions, uh, the steps I did to create the anti-venom, everything that is needed, but hand him those two things. With this, you should be able to um, use this as an example of what it should be. And with the notes here, you should be able to recreate it for yourself. All you need is a sample of the venom from the uh, uh, original snake or host, which should be easy enough to get. Thank you. Of course. Uh, I brought everyone else along. And now, for your gifts. And he. He's got like a small blue bag that was sitting on the ground next to him that he picks up and he reaches in and starting with you, Chatwin, the first thing he pulls out is what looks almost like a small, like it still can fit in your hand, but like a small stone plaque with runes carved on the front. And he sort of hands it over to you and just goes, this is a temporary access stone for our life. It is. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, is it like it's only open during the day thing? Because I can stay up super late if I could. I'm fine staying up late. It means I get a couple hours. In. It's open 24 hours. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. Music to my ears. Thank you so much. You're welcome. But make sure you return that when you're done. Yes, absolutely. Or is there this... will be consequences. Oh, yes. So whenever I'm finished um, tonight or in the morning. In the morning is fine. Just hand it to the librarian on your way out. Okay, excellent. I also have, and he reaches back into the bag, and he pulls out a long beige cloak that looks as if it would put on you, narrowly avoid touching the floor. You spot as he sort of, like, shakes it out to, like, its full glory. Runes sewn carefully into the inner lining of the cloak in red and orange use and he holds it out to you oh uh uh thank you so much uh i'm sorry this was unexpected oh (laughs) i i i absolutely appreciate it what is this so we took the liberties of the goals that you gave us and had a little fun putting some things together this is for you And each one comes with its own message, if you will. For you, Chatwin, who wanted to overcome your grief. Grief is a monster difficult for anyone to face. For some, it's a wave of sorrow drowning them in the pain of wounds they thought had already healed. For others, it is a face they never expected to see again, and certainly never wanted to. How one chooses to fight the pain that monster brings... It's just that, their choice. May this cloak give you the tools to confidently make that choice for yourself. And he places it in your hands. Take it. I'll kind of look around a bit nervously at everyone around me and kind of like, okay, and I'll put it on over my shoulders. All right. And it fits perfectly. Just a good couple inches off the floor. Nice. Okay. This is good because then it won't drag through the dirt and I won't have to clean the hem all the time. This is per- this is great. <laughs> Indeed. Who's next? Oh, can I push the thing forward? <laughs> <laughs> I was go I was going to say if no one else was going to step. 
I was about to say, you may as well bring out the wheel of uh, anxiety. It was called, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. I was hoping I wouldn't have to for the magic items. Um, and he nods as you come forward, Telfu, and goes, Ah, oh, the one who asked for the answer to a question. Well, obviously, I can't hold the answer to your question in a bag. What is your question? A good question, because I don't really remember. Um, no, I, I hold on. Just give me a moment. Because um, you had asked for, as your little trinket, the answer to a question. Yeah, I think I... I figured you had something in mind. I did. I did. I definitely did. And I do. Like, yes, the, the question was, if you have the answer, how may I reconnect with the stars? I have to hear the messages that they may bring to do their bidding. I have been guessing as so far as... I was guided to come here in the first place to plant new roots, but that is a message from the spirits, not the stars. So the question is, how may I reconnect, so to speak? Well, that is a difficult question, as everyone's connection to their deities, or in your case, the stars, is different. Some connect through prayer, through physical objects, through a pilgrimage of sorts. You could always visit a temple. Suppose that is an answer. I had just assumed it was something more than that. They do often say that a temple devoted to a god or demon or an angel is the strongest signal that any devotee could send by praying there. If you need to reach out, that would be the best bet. Suppose so. That is correct, of course. It was on my list of things to do, but I don't know why I expected a grander answer, but I thank you nonetheless. And he nods and goes, sometimes the answer is much simpler than we think, especially when we're in crisis and don't have the answers that we want. However, that is not the message from your item. And he reaches into the bag and he pulls out a beautifully carved bow, wood curling around the end of the string attached like vines wrapping around a tree trunk. As you... Observe the masterfully crafted wood when he places it in your hands. You see at the center of the large bent piece of wood is an opening that looks like it would house a crystal or decoration of some sort in the exact shape of the crystal that you wear around your neck. And he kind of looks at you for a moment and goes, For you, Thelthu. The one who wished to reconnect with the stars and his his deity, his faith. Faith can carry many through hardships and bless them in times of joy. And while faith can bring people together, the way that one experiences and celebrates their faith is all their own. If the way that those around you does not fully embrace the way that you would like to experience and celebrate your faith, then it becomes time for you to seek out your own way. Something unique to you that can connect you with your deity. May this bow help you pave the way to your own version of your faith. Delphu. Honored. Thank you. Thank you. And he nods and looks up to see who's next. Okay, that was pretty cool. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> he chuckles a bit and looks to you, Rubo, and goes, Oh, Rubo. Or as you said before, not Rubo. Not Rubo. All right. And he reaches down into the uh, bag and very quickly pulls out a modest, cozy, two-story home about the size of a birdhouse with adorable little green shutters and a green painted door and even like a little porch on the front that has like a little hammock hanging. I look over at Eliana. And she's kind of like, she's looking at it, kind of like frowning a little, but is very clearly trying to hold back her. Is it too late to change what I asked for? Well, and he kind of furrows a brow and goes, well, depends on how big the change is. I guess I, <sighs> Eliana has been a huge help to all of us, I suppose. And I kind of look down at my feet and I'm like, <sighs> she doesn't deserve things that belong to my friends. Can I just have a, a different house? Like, uh, I look at Aliana. You said there's empty ones, right? And she nods. There's a few that um, have moved on to their next journeys, left their houses behind. I'll just 
I'll just take one of those if if I can. And he nods and goes, I'll make the arrangements. Meantime, uh, places the house back in the bag very gingerly and comes out again with a immaculately crafted dagger that almost looks like a mini sword. At the end of the hilt sits a small metal circle the size of a coin connected to all of it. And carved on one side of the coin is an anatomical heart. And on the other side, a cartoony heart. And he flips it so that he's holding the flat of the blade, hands you the dagger. I I take it uh, gingerly from him. Uh, thank you. You're welcome, not Rubo. The one who asked to love and be loved in return. Love is complicated. I shoot a glance at Aelon. <laughs> very, very subtly. <laughs> love is complicated. Because there are many different ways to love someone. And it does not look the same for everyone. One thing, however, is certain about love. It finds you when you truly need it most. I don't think a dagger will necessarily help you find love. But it can pave the way for you to seek it out for yourself. In whatever form you need it. Whether that be friendship, romantic companionship, or something you haven't quite figured out you needed yet. Rubo's like softly like snuffling and he just like lunges forward not like in an aggressive way but lunges forward and just hugs this guy. And he's a little shocked at first and is kind of like (laughs) It's it's like that I grabbed him (laughs) hug. (laughs) Thank you. And I, I like push myself away and I like walk back to everybody else. And he takes a moment to kind of collect himself and just like uh, brush off the, the attack hug. <laughs> the attack hug and the speck of vomit that came off your shirt when you did it. <laughs> Dang. And he I wasn't trying to do him dirty like that. <laughs> I know. And he looks up for whoever's next. Elon would have seen Damien stumbling here. Yeah. Yeah. He would have seen him be a bit unsteady still. He's going to look to Damien. Do you need help stepping up? No, I'm good. Steps forward. And he nods and very quickly reaches his hand into the bag and pulls out a small leather bound journal that looks like it holds handmade paper. And he quickly flips it open to the first page. And in it sits a pressed flower with beautiful lilac petals and a deeper purple that runs through the center and ripples and reflects light almost like a river flowing down the petal, even though it's still. And he hands it to you and goes, your gift for your daughter. He's going to look at it for a while and just be like, oh, thank you. I completely forgot I asked for that. It's all right. I'm sure she'll love it either way. And this is for you. And he will reach again into the bag. And he will pull out what looks like a necklace of woven cord. And at the end sits this small green crystal. It's weird. You look at it for a moment. And at first it's just green by itself. And then there's a bit of gray at the top, almost as if like a storm cloud rolled in and rolled out. And he hands it to you and goes, you can keep that as a necklace if you'd like. Or I heard you were very proficient with crafting your own interesting things. So it could be fun for you to imbue something with it. What, what do you mean imbue something with it? Well, the crystal itself is magic, so. You, you mean like. I could attach it to, like, my hammer or my shield or something? Like, forge it into it? It would take some additional um, finesse that's not required for normal items, but yes. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Of course, Damien, who wanted to relive his youth, or the dreams of his youth. Youth can be a fickle concept to grasp, you know. Those living in it, it feels like a freedom to explore as much as their imaginations will allow. For those whose youth has passed, it's freedom from heavy burdens that we bear but don't want to. We cannot take back those years, but what we can do is find a way to take back the magic that existed in 
may this help you find that magic thing. And he presses the necklace into your hand. Thank you. I'll, I'll cherish it. I really will. I expect so. He means steps back. And last but not least, he looks up at Elon. Elon steps forward. Your trinket, your trinket's a bit different because it's not a trinket. And he looks over at Aliana, who flies forward. He looks very serious at Aliana. That is only if you want to. I don't know how many times they need to say that. As a companion, not as a servant, nothing like that. I appreciate the, the clarification. But honestly, I've had fun meeting all of you, traveling with you, even though it was on a bit of a crazy mission. But it'd be fun to travel with you for a little longer. And with that, she kind of looks at the winter Aladrin standing in front of you. And he goes, then, Aliana, what deal do you make? And she looks at him and goes, I agree that I will accompany Elon and his friends until I am called to return home. And he nods and holds out his hand. And she takes one of his fingers and they shake on it. And with that, she kind of smiles at Elon and flutters back to wait by the rest of the group as he reaches back into the bag and pulls out two beautifully crafted swords. One short sword. Two? One short sword and one long sword. Do you, um, I don't know if this will be familiar to anyone, but they're like Daisho swords. They look like katanas, basically. Um, one shorter than the other. But they sit in stunning silver sheaths. The hilt and guard, um, or the guard on the sword, rather. A stark black and shaped almost like a rune surrounded by a circle. Those same runes extend down the hilt and flat of the blade as you look at them on both swords in the same identical pattern. And the hilts are wrapped in a deep purple. For you, Elon, the one who wanted freedom to find himself. Well, these aren't exactly um, regulations, so I guess it's a good start. <laughs> no, I suppose they're not. But thank you. Of course. No, finding yourself is one of the most difficult tasks a young person can set themselves to. Especially when they've been surrounded by others all their lives that think they know them better than they know themselves. Regardless, they must one day carve their own path, either through air, mountain, boat. May these blades protect you in that journey, Elon. And may those around you rejoice when you embrace the man that you were always meant to be. He salutes again, putting his a closed fist over his heart up to his shoulder and walks back to the group. And he kind of looks at you all as the other three kind of stand behind him and give you all a very formal bow in unison. We thank you for the service that you have done for us. We are eternally grateful. Please go. Enjoy your gifts. Get some rest. Uh, thank you again. Um, uh, you helped us as much as we helped you. I expect we'll be heading out in the morning, yes? I'll get everyone else. Ideally. Okay. Um, so if we ever cross paths again, hopefully we can work together once more, help each other out again. But until that day... <laughs> until then. Everyone, um, I'm not going to head to bed quite yet. I'll talk in everyone else as we're leaving. Um, I'm not going to head to bed quite yet. I'm going to head over to the library, study what I can before heading to sleep, since I know we're leaving in the morning. Um, so. Yeah. Enjoy your books. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, nobody has to wait up for me. I can find my way. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you in the yeah. morning. I'll see you all. Um, yeah. Um, all, I'm gonna, I'm going, going to the library before bed. All right. For the long rest, I only have to rest for four hours. So I'm going to spend the first four hours of this mm -hmm. long rest researching and reading as much as I possibly can. Okay. And then I'm just going to go take my four hour rest, essentially. Awesome. Sounds good. And um, what books are you looking for first, I guess? Because I know you had a bit of a list. The most important ones I would like to find are ones covering um, genie type creatures. Um, and if there is any book anywhere that mentions the name Sandevec, if there is any type of book, scroll anything anywhere that mentions who she once was. Um, those are the two most important things I would like to research. 
Next on that list is anything on possession. And then at the bottom of the list is just anything covering the broad spectrum of like necromancy and such. Um, but yeah, those are the main um, topics that I'm going to be re- researching. If, yeah, I'll start with that. I'll Make me an investigation check to kind of ser- seek out the books because this library is massive. As you discover when you walk in, like there are, this library has three stories filled with books. Chowin is in fucking awe when she walks in. Nearly brings a tear to her eye. Um, I rolled an 18 on the die. This big, chunky d20 does me right every time. So that's an investigation, you said? Yeah. So that's 25 total. Fuck yes. Oh my god. (laughs) All right. We will get back to what you find in just a second. Um, As for everyone else, what are you... uh, Does anyone else need to do anything specific before they go to bed? Or is everyone just going back to the hotel to plop down? Elon's gonna look at Rubo and Damien and be like, both of you need baths. <laughs> uh-huh. I guess I can take care of that. I don't think that um, Damien should be anywhere near submerging in water for the night. Very true. We'll get him to a bed. No complaints, Damien? No, Damien's gonna be like, Rubo, I'm not like you. I'm not going to put my head under the water. I'm not going to sleep in the bath. I'm just gonna scrub off real quick and go to sleep. All right. You be careful. Please don't fall asleep under the water again. I don't want to have to come barge into your room with a hangover and pull you out. I I think I'll be okay for the night. All right. Oh, all of you, thank you for everything. Of course. They'll do. I'm sorry I was such an asshole. I was trying to push him out, and I just I don't have a hang of that stuff. It's, it's quite all, all right. His soul is at rest is what matters the most. The body is just a vessel. If I can never make it up to you, I'll do anything. Truly, it is quite all right. You faced a great hardship there, and I, I'm i sorry I could not play my part in this. But you did. You helped so much. She's stubborn. It's the only reason she wouldn't pass on so soon. She's always not been that way. <laughs> uh, Chatwin, if, if you ever need to talk... I'm at the library. Oh, like, oh, never mind. Conversation for later. He's looking where he's looking where Chatwin would be standing. <laughs> he's like, if you ever need to talk, you let me know. Wait, where did Chatwin go? She's at the she's at the library, Damien. Oh, and Elon, I don't know much about you, but thank you for having our backs when we needed it. No problem. Let's just get some rest so we can go back. That uh, sounds good. All right, he's gonna go up to his room. And there is one thing I'll do because I also only need the four hours of rest, but it'll it'll be quick. Um, okay. For the first half, it'll just be um, holding the bow and the star map and just gazing at the stars or whenever they come up and just meditating, focusing on on this new set of stars, I presume, or at least this new skyline and these the gift um, and just and spending four hours doing that before resting. You would sit with it for a bit and. After about 20 minutes of sitting, concentrating on the magic rippling through, you would sort of, you would get the urge to place the crystal in, inside the bow. He would do so. And you then watch as, in your hand, the, the bow shifts from the beautiful weapon of the bow to a, it would morph first into a long wooden staff with a dragon's head at the top, holding the crystal. And then as you focus on that for a few minutes, it morphs again to an ethereal-looking chalice that holds the pattern of a galaxy, the crystal sitting on the outside of the the glass this time. And then it morphs back into the bow and settles a bit more familiar into your hand. Yeah, he's going to spend the rest of his just staring at the stars and probably when he just rests, just holding on to this bow, gazing up at the stars. Alrighty. And now, anyone else doing anything specific before they go to sleep, before I jump back to that one? Aelin's probably getting food, showing face a little bit, and then if nothing else, really going back to his room and locking his door. Right. I think uh, shortly into the night, like I think probably like an hour after we're all settling to bed, uh, Damien hears his door creak open. His door. Damien, did you lock your door? Oh yeah. Or no, no, it wouldn't have. 
He just passed out on his bed. Okay. Your door your door creaks open and you just hear Oh Damien. Damien, are you awake? I'm gonna see if he's awake. <laughs> nope, he's fucking out. I I just like come into the room and I'm like, okay, he's asleep. Do I wake him up? No. Okay. And I, I just slowly close the door and then like I, I I'm dragging in like a blanket behind me and I lay down on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Damien's been my sleeping buddy this whole time, and Ruba didn't want to sleep alone. Dad, Dad, can I sleep with you? He just <laughs> curls up on the floor. And with that, as Ruba curls up on the floor, we cut back to Chatwin, curled up in reading chairs, taking in book after book. You would find quite a bit of information about... Um, you'd heard Santa Vec in your head mention Jin genies before but you were never able to find anything about them in any libraries on the material plane nothing but fictional stories anyway that santa vec scoffed at in the back of your head and said those aren't real here there are actual research books on genies jinn and you find out like many other things they have types mainly based around the elements and specifically looking into fire genies, they're known to be very cold, calculated, and hot-tempered. Although this personality trait, while they do show up, varies from type to type. Those who are more diplomatic and more communicative, more communicative uh, come off as very poised, very difficult to read. Whereas those who have less control will typically snap the moment something offensive or wrong is said. They don't know how to hold back their emotions. And they are very versed with the art of fire, controlling it, using it to help or harm others, depending on where they lean. And they find it, unless ineffective, to be their favorite weapon. In the possession books, you find um, chapters on a variety of studies um, though most of it has to do with things like demonic possession or um, possession by a ghost or ghoul and how most of the time you would have to go to a cleric for a special ritual or something like that to slowly remove the entity from within your body. If that's all for that I'm finding on possession, I guess just necromancy was up next. Um, the, I guess more specifically, like, different ways people are brought back like different methods mm. kind of used um okay because what chatwin remembers about her experience wasn't with a wave of a hand and casting a magic spell it was worse <laughs> mm-hmm. um and she's just wants to kind of explore kind of that area understood yeah so it it will go through the um more typical forms of necromancy in greater detail like uh, wizards raising corpses clerics bringing people back from the dead um things like that but then it starts to get into sort of what they call the experiment like what they call the experimenters who don't necessarily have either they have magical abilities or don't but they will um utilize human corpses to find ways to bring others back through alchemical means or with a combination of magic as well but usually these people are not the same as they started whether that be through um like they have some sort of physical deformity or um they come back haunted distracted different and you even get into um some experiments that were shut down for people trying to actively place the consciousness of someone in a different body that wasn't the one they started in. But they were never ethical and they never worked. So they were shut down by any research center that originally began funding them. Well, um, I thought that um, what the Arcanist did was unique. <laughs> Sounds like those methods are a lot more common than I thought. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Doesn't look like anyone else survived, though. So we have nothing else to go on. Yeah. Um, 
Did I find anything on the name, on Sendovec's name? Nothing. It would have listed a few, um, in your studies, like a few great generals and kings over time, but nothing on her. The more places that we look, the more I think that, um, you know who would be the best person to get information about all of this from would be? Who? I don't think I can ever look at him again, Sandovec. <sighs> but I know he has answers. I don't know where else to look. I know. If we want to fix this, there may not be another place no, to look. No, there has to be. There has to be. He's not the only asshole out there who knows things. <sighs> That's true, Chatwin. But he is the only asshole that was successful in this experiment that, that we have confirmed. That, Even if it wasn't successful in the way he wanted, there's, it was still successful. There's, there's so much of it, there, though. There's, there's so much of it. Not just through waving a hand and casting a spell, it, it, taking discarded parts, putting them together, mixes of alchemy and magic. People have been doing this for such a long time. I can't be the only successful one. I can't be the only one. <sighs> you may be the only one that your plane has ever seen. <sighs> Chatvin. What? We can't keep running for <laughs> If it means that I get out of your body and I don't have to fight anymore, then we can work together on this. You know I'm willing to smash him into a wall and demand that he help. I don't want that. Or I'll carve his eyes out and burn I, them in front. I, 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 I can't do that. Enough happened in that place. We don't need to invite more violence and bloodshed. Fair enough. We can have this conversation as many times. We're always going to be on our own sides of the argument. Fair enough. But you do have your friends now. I can't tell them about this. Not yet. I, I know. I know. It's... I want to so bad to tell somebody about what they did, but not yet. It's time isn't right. So I'm going to take what information I've gathered here. We can call it a night. Um. All right. But think about it, Chatman. I know it's difficult, but think about it. Yeah, that's um, it's all I think about these days. So I don't know if it's comforting or not to know that I'm not the only one that's people have tried this with or at least maybe i'm not the only oh. successful one <sighs> um as i finish up um i take notes on everything that i gathered take notes on everything i read put everything back the way it was um i'll return the token on my way out um so i don't forget in the morning um and when i return to the inn where everyone else is staying i go into my private room and I secure the door. I do my ritual of putting the chair up against the door, covering any mirrors or reflective surfaces in the room. Tonight I I remove the cloak and the coat and I kind of hitch up the skirt a bit and I just remove the gloves and just kind of look at my skin. The chunks of flesh and skin missing from both hands and kind of across the legs and one or two on the arms very faded marks of stitches very old that look like they once held my body together and i just regard them very quietly before i settle down for the night thinking about everything that i read and try not to think about where it all came from and with that as you fall to sleep plagued with nightmares not brought on by santavec for once that's where we're going to leave it for tonight ladies and gentlemen <gasps> oh boy thank you all so much for listening I know that was a longer episode than normal but if you like us please find us on social media we are Chronicles of Kriath Pod on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok we are also on YouTube as Chronicles of Kriath Podcast and all of our full episodes can be found there as well thank you all so much for listening to our shenanigans and our exciting magic item procurement gifting fuck yeah i will send you all descriptions oh, yes wonderful but your characters will find out in game regardless thank you all so much for listening i hope you enjoyed it and we will see you next time for we're doing something a bit different as that was the end of our first art so Woo-hoo. we'll be joining you with 
a little Q&A next week to give a little buffer for me to do some extra prep work to get us into arc two. So thank you again for joining us on this crazy journey and we will see you next time. Bye. 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 Yay. Happy 25 episodes. <laughs>